Columbia people are mostly curious. <laughs> a lot of people were uh, excited about this and anxious to see it pass through Columbia. I just came to see it. Well, good morning, stay in Lancaster. We have a few road closures for that Three Mile Island generator move. Front and Bridge Streets, they're both closed off between 441 and 2nd Street. There were some low hanging utility lines, so our utility crews were working ahead of us to lower those so that we could pass through. So they turned my cable off. I was watching Blue's Clues. They turned my cable off. Uh, the steam generators weigh about 510 tons each. Big. I'm <laughs> freaking out. <laughs> and the whole package, including the transporter, is 820 tons. But oh my goodness. I wouldn't want that thing to fall on my foot. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> no. That looks like a uh, submarine going through Columbia. Very slow and very cautious. Approximately one to three miles per hour. Three miles an hour? That's no speed. <laughs> These streets are very, very narrow, which surprises me, they but I guess they have no other choice. I asked why they didn't put it on trains and stuff, and they said it would collapse. It would collapse. The transporter has 208 wheels, and what that does is spreads the weight across those wheels. So to the road, this looks like a heavy truck. That's a big spectacle. Something, I guess, never really happened in Columbia. Columbia's on the map again. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. It was awesome. I was freaking out. See something we don't see every day. From the outside, Sovereign Bank Stadium in York looks similar to just about every other ballpark. There you go. Thank you. But on the inside, there's a huge difference. Behind me, you'll notice a giant outfield wall, which we, we have dubbed the arch nemesis. It is the tallest wall in all of professional baseball, surpassing Fenway Park's Green Monster by six inches, actually. And much like its predecessor in Boston, the arch nemesis features a hand-operated scoreboard. My name is Brad Doherty. They call me Doc. I work the uh, manual scoreboard out here in left field. Ground rule double. I love to come out here and watch the game. He's going to walk him, I just know it. Peering through a tiny hole in the scoreboard, Doc doesn't have the best seat in the house, but he never misses a pitch. The streak is that I haven't missed a home game up to this day. And uh, of course, it all started two years ago. In some small way, you know, why help the fans, you know, enjoy the game by, you know, keeping track of everything. And the wall has been a hit with the fans. One, two, three, hit the wall! People in New York are very, very proudful of things that are that are theirs. And, and the ballpark is theirs. It's ours. These are comfortable birds. These are all inspiring birds. You'll just see waves upon waves upon waves of snow geese coming in. Every day there's more. <laughs> we had 3,000 snow geese here a week ago. We now are estimated 120,000. We're on the Lancaster Lebanon County borders at Middle Creek Wildlife Management Area. When you have 80,000 snow geese flying over your head, a hat's a good idea. Your typical greater snow goose is all white with the black wingtips, about six, seven pounds. To be frank, these birds are goofy, and for some, some known, unknown reason, they'll all get up, fly a half loop around the lake, and then land right where they were. It's um, a cacophony of noise, you know, that just thrills you, because, and uh, a spectacular sight. The sound, the sound is awesome. If you're here for any length of time as you head home, you, you can hear that sound in your head for, for an hour after you leave the place. Three things really trigger migration. The key one is the lengthening of day. The other one is open water. We were frozen hard a week ago. The lake opened up. They need open water to roost on. And the snow melted. Thank goodness. And those open fields, that's their food. So they need food, they need a place to roost, and that's why they're here. and they're heading to Baffin Bay, Baffin Island, which is about 800 miles south of the North Pole. I wonder how far over the hill 
they go. You know, the part that we can't see. Oh, there, there are good ways over there. You can come right here to Middle Creek and a lot of white. A lot of white out there. The ground almost looks like it's covered with snow. Right. We have a pair of bald eagles that live here year round. See, I can see it, but I know where I'm looking. Yeah. <laughs> Is he picking out his dinner? <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's a mature eagle. <laughs> eagle bait. We're getting reports of significant snow goose activity north of us. So that suggests to me that these birds aren't going to be here very long. It's just spectacular. It just uh, takes your breath away. Um, I equate it to the northern lights. I've seen the aurora up in Alaska, and this is every bit as spectacular to me. Right here in our backyard. It just inspires uh, a sense of awe, you know, and you don't get that kind of thrill every day. Yeah, it's unbelievable that there's this many of one species gathered in one spot out here in Pennsylvania.